Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and I'm standing on the construction side of my green home here in downtown Lilburn, Georgia. Today, the house gets insulation. Insulation is extremely important in a home's energy efficiency and comfort. It's also the case where bad installation can be extremely costly in the long run. We'll be installing four types of insulation on our home in order to maximize the opportunity for the highest R value and for demonstration purposes. On the roof line, we have open sole spray foam. On the vertical walls, we have dense packed blown in fiberglass. The basement walls have closed sew foam, and then we've got that layer of rigid foam behind the sheathing. This is going to be a well-insulated house. So talk me through our insulation choices. That to me means your thermal boundary. So, you know, on your house or any house, you need to maximize your thermal uh, values, whether it's in the wall ceiling or even under the slab. In your case, in your house, we are doing everything, all right? In an ide idealistic point, you would want to have a continuous thermal boundary around your entire house. That can be done, but in our case, we have the best that we could put into this project. Then on our basement walls, we have, uh, on the exterior, we have an R5 high density fiberglass product that works as a drainage tile and waterproofing with a trench drain. Okay, so we have exterior insulation. And coming from the basement up on the interior, we also have insulation. In your case, we have one inch of closed cell foam. Any above grade walls, we decided to use R6 zip sheathing. That is great because it gives you a full thermal break around your house. All right, so we don't have thrown wood contact or it's greatly minimized. And those are highways of uh, thermal transfer and heat loss. So we made that break with some exceptions. So you have an R6 board and basically the six means the R value of that zip sheathing board, okay, which is one inch of poly -iso. Continuing with the wall, we were back and forth with the open cell phone, closed cell phone or what to do there. And given that we have already a very airtight building envelope by using zip system, we said, well, let's gain the extra R that a high density bib system gives you, which is a blown fiberglass. And having that two by six cavity instead of an R value of 18, 19, which is open cell foam, have R23. So we were able to increase that by about 20% by just switching uh, materials. Now, and when it comes with the uh, roof decking for this particular home, uh, since uh, it made a lot of sense to use spray foam under the roof deck, that allow us to run the mechanical in that attic space and bring all your mechanical system inside the building envelope. That's what you wanna do if it's allowed. Uh, now, not all attics that are encapsulated need to be spray foam. There are other ways of addressing that, but in this particular case, it made more sense to do it with the open cell foam. We, in general, practice using open cell foam because if there happens to be a leak, we hope we don't have any leaks on the roof. Uh, it's an open cell product, so you will always see the leak coming through your house. Now, we make sure that that doesn't happen. But if it does, it's a way of why we use uh, open cell phone. So Tom, that's your thermal boundary system. To sum up, we've got an R19 roof with spray foam insulation. Our walls are R29 with our R6 foam on the outside and then our R23 dense packed fiberglass. On the inside of the basement walls, we have R7, which is one inch of closed cell foam. And then on the outside of the basement walls, we have that fiberglass layer, which is an R5. And add to that the thermal mass of the wall itself. And then the fact that most of that's underground and the ground temperature is at a constant 50 degrees. So we're not as concerned with thermal bridging occurring underground. Insulating for maximum R value. That's one thing that makes a greenhouse green. 
Thanks for watching. Please like and share, and subscribe for new videos weekly. The Green Shorts Greenhouse, uncovering what makes a greenhouse green.